Yesterday, we arrested a 77-year-old Edmonds man. Uh, he's suspected of murdering 20-year-old Jody Loomis in 1972. His name is Terrence Miller. He was charged with murder in the first degree yesterday afternoon. We took him into custody yesterday morning without incident at his residence, and he was identified as a suspect through the process of genealogical DNA. Uh, this is similar to what we used in our arrest last year of the suspect in the 1987 cold case murder of Jay Cook and Tanya Van Kylenborg. Before I begin uh, a little background on the case, I want to thank Detective Jim Scharf, the other detectives and volunteers from the Snohomish County Sheriff's Office who worked tirelessly on this case. I also want to thank Parabon Analabs and genetic genealogist Deb Stone, who did great work in helping us arrive at this place today. Without their determination, and along with advances in DNA technology, we would not be here today. Today's arrest is just one of an increasing number of arrests around the country that are happening every day, happening every day as a result of gen genetic, geneal I'm sorry, genetic genealogy advancement. With each arrest, we get closer to answering the question all families of victims want to know. What happened, and hopefully a why. Whether a murder happened yesterday, last year, or over four decades ago, it's our duty to the victims and their families to find their killer. Today, we're one step closer to finding justice for Jody Loomis and her family. And I'll go into a little background on the case at this point. On August 23, 1972, 20-year-old Jody Loomis intended to ride her bicycle from her residence on 20 Winesap Road to Strummy Road, where she was going to ride her horse, kept at a stable there. She rode north on North Road from uh, uh, Filbert Road to 164th Street and east to the Bothell Everett Highway. She was last seen crossing the highway and riding up the hill on Penny Creek Road in what is now Mill Creek. At approximately 5.30 p.m., two people found Jody disrobed and shot in the heads in the woods off of Penny Creek Road. They transported her to Stevens Memorial Hospital in Edmonds, where she was pronounced deceased. She was wearing only panties, socks, waffle stomper style boots that she had borrowed from her sister, her 12-year-old sister that day. An autopsy determined that her cause of death was a gunshot wound to the head, likely from a 22. Also during the autopsy, multiple swabs were taken from her body and some showed abundant spermatozoa. Missing from her bicycle was the bridle for her horse. In 2008, Detective Scharf sent a number of items to the Washington State Patrol Crime Lab for DNA testing. Among the items sent to the crime lab were the boots that Jody was wearing that day. The Washington State Patrol Crime Lab indicated that the spermatozoa had been located on the left boot and spermatozoa were micro microscopically visible. So the partial DNA, DNA profile obtained from the semen on the left boot was determined to be that of an unknown male and the partial profile from that sperm fraction was then uploaded into the CODA system. There have never been any hits on that sample. Last July, the DNA extract from the suspect was sent to Parabon Nanolabs for analysis. In August of last year, we received the results naming possible relatives to the sample and volunteer genealogist Deb Stone provided a report after she built a family tree. She identified a possible suspect. This is where Terrence Miller's name first came to our attention. Detectives followed Terrence Miller to a local casino and recovered a discarded coffee cup that he had used. A forensic scientist confirmed that DNA collected from the cup, discarded by Terrence Miller, matched the suspect DNA collected from the boots that Jody was wearing. Working with prosecutor Craig Matheson, we put together a chargeable case against Terrence Miller. Miller did not know Jody Loomis prior to that day. <coughs> he was interviewed by detectives yesterday, but declined to provide any statements about his involvement in the killing. We believe we have a murder suspect, but without his cooperation, we still have a few unanswered questions that we'd like to try to get uh, resolved. First of all, what happened to the bridle for Jody's horse that she had with her that day? Did Miller possess any firearms in 1972? If so, what kind? 
What kind of vehicle did Miller drive around the time of the murder, and where did he work? Anyone who has information that can help us answer those questions is urged to call the Sonoma County Sheriff's Office tip line and provide that information to us.